So right now we're going to practice writing chemical formulas and naming ionic compounds. So if you're given the name of ionic comp compound, you should be able to write the formula. If you're given the formula, you should be able to give the name. Okay, so you can tell something is ionic looking at the name because it will not have anything like mono or di or tri. Those types of compounds that have those prefixes of the numbers, those are covalent. And then also looking at them, you'll notice that the first one is a cation like calcium, sodium, lithium, so metal. And then the second one is a nonmetal and it ends in ide. So like oxide, sulfide, nitride, phosphide, chloride, etc., etc., etc. So it's something from the left side of group 4 and also from the right side of group, group 4. That's how you can tell it's ionic. Okay, and then for naming these, we know it's very simple. You just name the cation first, then the anion second, but it doesn't tell you how many there are. How do we determine the number of atoms of each for the molecular formula? And that comes from the opposite charges, and so I call this flipping the charge. So for calcium, we know that this ion... Oops, this ion is in group 2, so this is going to have a charge of 2 plus. Oxide is in group 6, this is going to have a charge of 2 minus. So, what I mean when I say that the, the charges are going to flip, the charge of the oxide tells you the number of the calcium ions that you need, and the charge of the calcium tells you the number of oxide that you need. So when we flip them, let me color code these a little better. So I'm going to do oxide in purple and calcium in green. Still the same numbers, 2 plus, 2 minus. Okay, so we're going to have CaO, and this 2 the charge of the oxide becomes the number of calcium atoms written as a subscript. So this 2 always means the number of atoms of whatever's before it. And same deal with the calcium charge. It becomes the number of oxygen atoms. But we see both of these are, are divisible by 2, so we simplify that. So our final answer here is calcium oxide CaO, because Ca2O2, these can both be divided by 2. When you divide them both by 2, the simplest one is Ca1O1. We don't write the ones. The final answer is CaO, because as long as the name's there, you know that there's at least one atom there. Okay, so let's practice again sodium nitride. Sodium's at group 1, so that's Na, and its charge is plus 1, just one charge. Nitride, that's N, this one is in group 5, its charge is 3 minus. So when we go to write this, N, A, N, but how many atoms of each? This 3 from the nitride is going to become the number of atoms of the sodium. And this one of the charge of the sodium becomes the number of atoms of the nitride. Okay, so when we simplify this, we don't write the number one. Na3n, both of, uh, we can't divide this by three, that's fine, so this is our final answer there. Okay, so there's two examples of given the name, writing the formula. And remember to simplify, and the charges flip. Okay, so this one ends up over there, this charge ends up over there. Okay, so over here, writing the name. So writing the name is really kind of easy. We know that magnesium came from magnesium ion, Mg2+, plus. this is a group two element, and phosphorus, came from group 5, 3 minus, and so if we see here, if we look at the charges, this 3 ended up with the magnesium, this 2 ended up with the phosphorus, and to name these, it's really simple, we just name the ions, drop in the word ions, so magnesium, name of the cation first, which would be magnesium ion, drop ion, and then second ion here would be phosphorus, right? But you drop the us 
and add eyed. So these all have eyed endings. And my favorite one to help you remember, sodium, that's the first ion, and then the second one, chloride, because everyone's heard of this. This is normal table salt. This will help you help you remember that they're supposed to have an eyed ending, which we see in all of these examples.